What's up everybody, it's Flynn here from Nameless Co. And if you clicked on this video, you are probably either a subscriber or you're in the market for buying a Mitsubishi Delica. Today, I'm gonna be giving you guys my five things that I look for before purchasing a Delica because I already own two and I most likely will be buying another one in the future. Not near future, but probably in the next five years. So without further ado, let's get into it. Standing behind my L400 here, the first thing that you guys are probably gonna be wanting to narrow down is whether or not you want an L400 or an L300. Now, we already made a video on comparing both of these, so if you guys wanna check that out, I'm gonna link it right here. But personally, if I were to get one for a do-it-all daily driver, I'm gonna wanna go with the L400. Now, the reason that is is because of the airbag law. Now, recently on the forum and online, I have been seeing Delicas being hit in Virginia and kind of all over the US and probably in other countries too. So, if you guys care about safety and it is your one vehicle that you guys are driving every day no matter if you're going to work or if you're going on a weekend trip go with the l400 it's going to give you that added safety benefit by having that airbag and just it's built a little bit better and it's less of a tin can so the most popular delicas that you will be finding on the market are going to be the diesel models however if this is going to be a one do-it-all vehicle and you're going to be using this for short trips around town then i would go with a gasser now i both have diesels in my l3 and my l4 now that's because i just like diesels and they're a little bit better on mileage and they're just kind of like what you think of when you see like a 4x4 van especially when it comes to something from japan from the 90s now coming over here you can't really see too well because it's super glary but this engine bay is a bit cramped compared to my l300 you got to take off the inner cooler just to get to things and because it is the diesel model it is in fact easier to work on but we're going to take you guys over to my l3 i'm going to show you guys some places to uh look for now Overall, my L300, when I first bought it, um, if you go back, we, I can link this video right here when I did the timing belt, water pump, radiator, and all that work. Now, I'm, I'd say, not an advanced mechanic, but I'm definitely not a novice mechanic. Now, the L300 is pretty easy to work on. If you know how to turn a wrench and you know how to read, you can pretty much do everything on this motor. Now it is from Japan and it pretty much is a Lego when it comes to working on cars in general, especially this van. Um, overall, circling back to the diesel versus gasser um if you're gonna get a gasser go with the l300 gasser don't get an l400 gasser because the v6s are notorious for just blowing up because they're not maintained well now the l300s is the 4g64 which is basically a naturally aspirated evo motor which you can turbocharge and i know there are companies that are building turbo kits for those vans so down the line i could definitely see myself potentially getting an l300 gasser if i ever do get another l300 but for the meantime i really enjoy my 4d56 which is the diesel motor that came in these l300 vans and they can last upwards of 500,000 kilometers or more and they're really really cheap motors i mean even a new crate motor from hondai which is the replacement motor for the 4d56 which is the db4f I think they can only run like three thousand to five thousand dollars which is a lot of money but considering you're getting a whole new platform new turbo pretty much everything new you can't really beat um how cost efficient these vans are and how easy they are to work on so regardless of if you go gas or diesel you can't really go wrong but definitely go diesel if you're going to be getting that l400 so when you guys are heading out to go check out your first Delica, and if you're very serious, you might be actually bringing the cash and be ready to buy that Delica, you're gonna wanna know some places to look for if you aren't mechanically inclined and you don't already know about oil leaks and where the most common oil leaks are with these cars. Now, this clip is gonna apply to both Delicas because the 4M40 is a very similar motor to the 4D56. They're both gonna share some common issues if they're not maintained well. Now, if they are maintained, well they should not have any oil leaks however the most common oil leak is going to be coming from the valve cover gasket now if you look along here down by the glow plug 
um, glow plug assembly, you can see there's like a little bit of gasket material. Now mine was sealed at one point, so there are no oil leaks. However, on the back of the motor, sometimes the oil can drip down and it can kind of go by the transmission and that could be considered a rear main seal leak, which is an area where the transmission hooks up to the engine and there's a seal there which can leak. And if that leaks, then you have to pull the whole transmission. You have to replace that seal. Luckily for me, my seal was replaced prior to purchasing mine. However, on the front end of the engine, this actually won't apply to the 4M40 that is in my L400 because the 4M40 in the L400 is powered by a internal timing chain, whereas these motors have timing belts. Now, the differences are gonna be how many oil seals there are. I think there are about four or five oil seals on the 4D56 in the L300. Now, those can leak like a bitch. And when I say that, I mean like a quart of oil about every 500 miles and that's what mine was burning when i first bought it i had to basically keep topping this thing off with oil until i got it home to replace those and that was i'd say probably the biggest oil leaker on these vehicles which are going to be the oil seals because they are a little bit harder to do when you're doing your timing belt because you have to take off the cam sprocket and the crank sprocket and you got to pull off the balancer sprockets and you got to basically take like a screwdriver and kind of pick them out um, if you guys click on that video that I linked of me doing all the maintenance to this van you guys can see how I did it and it wasn't that difficult just took some time and kind of a little bit of a learning curve but if you guys do see oil seals on the Delica you're going to look at you can use that as a leverage point to get the price down because a lot of times if you're buying a Delica sight unseen or from a dealer they might not necessarily state all the issues that they have because with Japanese vehicles people tend to kind of just be like oh it's a Japanese car like it's gonna have little things here and there whereas in reality it's a vehicle just like everything else and like I said you can use that as a leverage point to get the price down cheaper because you know you're gonna have to fix it down the line one more thing that's pretty easy to check if you're going to be checking the timing belt life and the oil seals is once you already have the fan shroud off now i deleted my fan shroud which is a you know that's a topic for another day but you can spin the fan and if the if the fan spins freely then the uh fan clutch is bad but if the fan is kind of hard to spin that means that the uh, fan clutch has a lot of fluid left in it um, if it spins freely by doing that it can lead to overheating issues especially if you don't have an upgraded radiator which most delicas don't but if it spins firm which mine does then it's good to go and you got a lot of life left in it following up with the maintenance side of things now as you guys can see here i have a pretty decent stack of maintenance records from where my uh delica was purchased which was rising sun in vancouver now i didn't buy it from rising sun i bought it from someone who bought it from rising sun um as you can see they included a maintenance schedule here which has all the different intervals you should be doing things at um, because rising sun replaced a lot of the wear items on this vehicle when it was imported I didn't have to worry about the timing chain and all these other things with my L400. Now I'm just gonna show you guys what I use right here, which is a diesel fuel additive. Now I recommend with the older diesels, just any diesel in general, you're gonna wanna use some sort of additive. Um, I like the standard dyne stuff, but I know diesel clean is pretty good. It's uh, certified by Cummins. And I actually have uh, down here, this handy dandy little, uh, like set of glass jars where I fill them up ahead of time because the diesel additive does not smell that good. And I can also link this stuff in the bio. If you guys are wondering where I got my uh, supplies from, um, Amazon is obviously great. If you don't wanna support Amazon, you can go to your local auto parts store and whatnot. But kind of some of the benefits from using a diesel additive is you're gonna save on mileage and you're also gonna save your fuel pump. Now. Both of my Delicas have mechanical diesel pumps. The newer Delicas, I wanna say 1998 and newer, it's electronically injected. So that's gonna be a little bit different, but you're, you can still use the fuel additive. You're never gonna hurt yourself by using fuel additive. It's always gonna add to the fuel and make the diesel better. It's gonna replace the low sulfur in most diesels, especially if you're in California. Um, I really em could not emphasize this more. Um, you know, fuel filters will pretty much last forever if you are using a fuel additive. If you're not using a fuel additive, 
that could lead to fuel injectors leaking, it could lead to your pump leaking, and you do not want to deal with a new having to either rebuild your pump or get a new pump that can cost north of a thousand dollars and one of these bottles i mean this is more expensive but the diesel clean and other additives can only cost about 20 to 30 dollars and those can treat up to 300 gallons of diesel so this is definitely a must have if you are getting a delica that is diesel coming underneath of my l300 now i think i showed how bad or not how bad but what my current rust situation is like um quite frankly it's not that bad um there's rust you know on a lot of the pinch welds and there's obviously service rust or surface rust on my back bumper but at the moment i don't see any really gnarly like structural rust i'm gonna uh, add a clip in right now of the uh driver's side rocker panel where there's like a pretty decent sized like hole in the panel um it's not on the frame it's just on the like side panel so i'm gonna get that dealt with eventually down the line but stay tuned for a future video of me doing rust prevention on this l300 and then i might make a video on the l400 but primarily on the l300 um if you guys are looking at a delica you're obviously going to want to look for rust um these Rust is the silent killer, especially with Japanese cars and especially with Delicas. No matter how good your Delica is running, if you have holes in the frame and you know one day it literally just splits in half, then you're not going to be too happy. So you're going to want to look, you know, underneath the vehicle. Um, obviously, on the side frame rails right here, and then on the rear frame rails up above the uh, back tires, and then on your differential. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's not too rusted. Uh, mine, you know, has light surface rusting. And at one point, it looked like somebody did um, some sort of undercoating, but that kind of blew off in the uh, Pacific Northwest winters. Um, but overall, it's not too bad. And if you catch it early, which I'm gonna be showing you guys how to catch it early and what products I will be using, then you're pretty much good to go. And Anybody can do basically light rust prevention where you're using a reformer and then an undercoating. It does not take that much skill level. You can just go out there, go to your Home Depot, do some light searching, or even watch the Nameless Co. video on how to do it once I do make that video if you guys are interested in. And you know, it's a good way to kind of get going on your Delica build and making it last a lifetime because if you guys treat these vans right, they will treat you right and they will last for kilometers and miles to come. So lightly underneath you know just make sure there are nothing there's nothing you know way too gnarly like holes in the frame or anything of that nature and just if it's light surface rust just know that you can prevent it and you can get rid of it so that's going to be covering the kind of more rust side of things when looking for a delica Last but not least on the list, I'm gonna be talking about overall build quality. Now I know I made the comparison video a couple months ago when I first got my L400 comparing those two. So if you guys wanna watch the full in-depth review of that, you can guys go over there and click on that now. But I'm gonna be giving you guys a quick build quality difference between the L3 and the L4. Now I know I mentioned safety. The L4 has airbags, the L3 doesn't. You're sitting on top of the front, we like on top of the front tires in the L3, and now the L4 is going to drive much more like a regular passenger van would. Now the L400 has a spring and strut design, whereas like a coil spring and strut design, whereas the L300 has leaf springs. Now, if you guys are looking for something that's going to be a lot more, like I said earlier, daily drivable and road trip friendly, go with the L400. It's gonna be faster top end. It's gonna be a lot more comfortable to drive around in. But if you guys are looking at it from the style perspective, you can't really beat an L300. And that's honestly why the L300 was the first Delica that I purchased because it caught my eye. Whereas the L400 blends in a lot more when you're just looking at a parking lot full of recreational vans at a ski resort or at a mountain bike park. Um, and that's where I saw my first Delica, which was in Whistler, Canada. Um, overall, there's not really too many things that differentiate them from the actual drivability. Like I mentioned earlier, the steering is pretty similar. They both have power steering. Mine I deleted on my L300, but that doesn't pertain to you guys because most of the Delicas do have power steering. And I think 
the L400 makes about 30 or 40 more horsepower, which isn't that much. Um, it's funny because my L400 is an automatic and it makes more power. However, my L300 pulls harder up hills than my L400 does. So that's just some food for thought. Thank you guys for making it to the end of another Nameless Co video. I hope these tips and pointers help you guys when you're going to look at your Delica. And I wish everybody the best of luck on joining the Delica Club. If you guys do end up getting a Delica, I recommend joining the Reddit form if you're on Reddit and joining the Delica form or the Delica club in Canada if you're in Canada or if you're in the USA. There's tons of members on there and there's tons of places to figure out where you can get your Delica worked on and where you can get your Delica um, like where you can just buy a Delica because they have a marketplace on there as well. But overall, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, and just the Delica form is where you're gonna probably be finding most of the Delicas that are listed for sale in North America. And then obviously, if you're in other parts of the country then or other parts of the world, then you're gonna know where to find cars for sale that way. So I wish you guys the best of luck and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day.